Hi Scorpio! Welcome to your love reading for October 2019 and welcome back to my channel Lunasync Tarot. Thank you for joining me here. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications. I do love readings for each sign for each month. Alright, so I'm working with a different deck than I typically work with. This is the Mother Peace deck. It's one of my favorite decks and I'm really excited to work with it. It's the same spread that I that I typically use. It's the love spread. So I've already shuffled your cards and I laid them out here, so let's sync up. In the position of you, we have the Justice card, a major arcanic card major arcana card. In the position of the other, we have the Daughter of Wands. In the position of the combined energy, we have the Wheel of Fortune, another major arcana card. And in the position of what needs to be understood and integrated or the outcome is the Ace of Wands. So, <clears throat> in the position of you and what you're contributing to the connection in October is this sense of justice. Things are starting to feel right again, and timing is starting to feel right and relevant for you in your life right now and in this connection. If you see in this picture, um, what you'll see here are the, the three fates or the norns. In Scandinavian culture, I think they call them the norns. They are in wordless silent communication with all of nature, with everything that surrounds them. And they hold, they weave or unravel the thread of time and break it off and decide what is to come next, right? So there's something in your life that has, um, what did, how do you say it? That has achieved justice. It's just starting to feel like you, you got what you deserved. Like this feels right. Um, in the position of the other, what your partner is contributing to the connection in October is the Daughter of Wands. So this is a person who is rushing into the future with the wisdom of the past. And as you can see, this figure is holding a wheel. We have the Wheel of Fortune down here. Um, the Daughter of Wands, or in the typical traditional uh, tarot, deck is the Page of Wands. So it's somebody who is really learning about their craft. They're at the beginning stages. They're sort of an apprentice. Um, they're learning about some new type of energy, some new creative endeavor, some entrepreneurial um, pursuit. They're really learning and honing their craft in some way, and they're very inspired. Sometimes the Daughter of Wands or the Page of Wands will be referred to as sort of the muse. Um, they're bringing inspiration, and they're also feeling ins inspired as well. So something is feeling right about your connection, and your partner is also feeling very inspired. And this person has a lot of energy to move forward, a lot of ability to take action. High enthusiasm, um, high, uh, high energy, and... Um, it seems like your partner is able to move this thing forward. Whatever, whatever is feeling right, they're really sort of the, the impetus or the inspiration to move forward with it. And then find, or in the, in the position of the combined energy, we have the Wheel of Fortune. So when the Wheel of Fortune comes into play, a big transformation happens. It's not a little transformation. It's a big change. It's a big transformation. Something is, you know, like the... The Justice card is linked to the Wheel of Fortune card. It's like karma is coming around. So justice is about karma. It's about the Wheel of Karma. It's about the slow, regular turning of the Wheel of Karma, the relentless working of the Wheel of Karma. And the Wheel of Fortune is the, is the manifestation of this justice around this karmic situation. So there's some big change, big transformation um, that's happening when the two of you come together. This is in the position of your combined energy. And then in the outcome or what needs to be understood and integrated is the Ace of Wands. This is a fiery new beginning as you can tell from looking at the card. Again, it's high energy, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of action, um, creativity, entrepreneurial efforts, any new project or new relationship that begins under the auspice of this particular card, the Ace of Wands, holds good promise for the future. 
So this is looking really good. You're starting to feel right about something. Something something finally feels like, ah, oh, okay, I get it. This feels right. This like it's clicking. Something is clicking. And your partner is feeling very inspired whether it is um, with the connection itself or learning about you, learning about the connection or learning about, you know, engaged in some new creative project possibly that involves you. And this big, when you come together, there's this big shift, this big change, like this big transition, like the wheel turns, right? And you get to move on to the next level almost is what it feels like. The next step can take place. And in the outcome is this new beginning, this fiery, creative, passionate new beginning. That's awesome. So let's work with the Tarot of Sexual Magic. I want to know what your partner is thinking about your connection in October. How do they feel about you? How do they think about you? And how do they perceive your connection? <clears throat> I like this justice card and the, the symbolism in this card um, because it speaks to like that psychic communication, not really having to use words to communicate and to know. So this is how your partner feels about you and your connection in October. It is, uh, it's the star. So in this imagery, a woman is pouring what looks to be like milk or some sort of liquid over the chest of a man. And it's at nighttime. There's a night sky with a very prominent star. Can you see that? Yeah, good. A very prominent star in the sky. And there's a body of water adjacent to them. And the star really is about healing. It's about a healing force at play in your connection. I think they see your connection as a healing force and they see you as a star, you know, their guiding star. People would navigate the night, they would look for the, the star, the north star in the night sky in order to navigate their way back home. And so I think that they're looking at your connection as that star that they use to navigate their way home. Like you are home, you are the star. That's beautiful. How do you feel about this connection in October? How do you feel about your your partner, your love interest? What do you think about your chemistry with them? Ooh. The Eight of Swords. That's interesting. Okay. So the Eight of Swords. We see in this, this figure, this man is um, hunching over this woman who is naked, and there is a devil in the background. There, is, Pan, I'm not gonna say devil, it's Pan. Pan is in the background here, and he's like looking in behind the curtain and looking in at the scene. So the way that you feel about them is there's like, Pan is very high sexual energy. It's about libations. It's about having a good time. It's about mischievousness, or he is about mischievousness. It's about intense sexuality. It sometimes connotes um, sexual addiction, um, bondage, or uh, being bound, um, psychically bound to some sort of sexual energy. The eight, um, eight is about infinity. And swords, the suit of swords is about... Um, thought forms and ideas and communication. So I feel that the way that you think about the connection is that it's, it's very sexual. It's very, I don't know, like borderline addicting, borderline addictive, and you're very much up in your head about it. All right. Let's pull some clarifying cards here. What is... Huh. Maybe you're waiting for this sense of justice to come about inside of this connection. Let's pull a few clarifying cards about you because this kind of... This is kind of throwing me off a little bit. I want to know a little bit more about how you feel about this connection and what this 
justice card is in connection with the Eight of Swords. Let's clarify both of these. Where are you at in this connection in October? I'm going to use the Osho Zen deck for this to clarify these two cards. I want to know what you're bringing to the table and where you're at. This is a uh, judgment beyond illusion. In the traditional deck, it's judgment. So you're on the verge of a awakening, on the verge of a rebirth of some sort, and moving beyond illusory uh, reality and the illusions of reality, becoming disillusioned by something. Uh, or maybe you have been di disillusioned and now you're starting to feel like things are, are um, becoming set right. Things are um, turning in your favor. But uh, judgment really is about reviewing your past, reviewing your experiences in the past, the decisions that you've made in the past, taking a new perspective and integrating what you've learned from the past so that you can enter into this healing energy so that you can heal and getting to a point of absolution. So self-forgiveness and for forgiving others and releasing it and gaining this new experience of freedom. All right, let's clarify your partner. Let's clarify the, the Daughter of Wands. What are they so inspired by in October? What is this new thing that they're rushing towards? Um, what is that all about? Something having to do with healing, that's for sure. feel like they they think about you as somebody who is healing or they think about you as somebody who heals them and maybe both oh oh boy a lot of cards fell out um i just want one so let's just shuffle till we get one i don't want to read 10 I mean, honestly, it looks like some big stuff is up for you. We have judgment and we have justice. We have a, a lot of major arcana cards in a spread that has relatively few cards. So we have three. Oh. Um, ooh, here we go. The source. What is this about? So we wanted to clarify the Daughter of Wands. <clears throat> And what this thing is that your partner is so inspired by, what they're rushing off towards, what, what is this thing? And we got the source, and we got um, turning in. So the source is very similar to the Ace of Wands. The source is about tapping into your, uh, your inner um, creative, well of creative energy. The thing that exists inside of all of us, right? We're all powered by source energy. I think the thing that... Um, is different or differentiates uh, most of us is our uh, built where we fall on that continuum of being able to tap into that source energy and how we use it, how we tap into that source energy and how we we um, distribute that energy, how we cultivate it, how we generate it, how we uh, retain it, conserve it, and how we distribute it. But source energy is like. It's source, it's creative source, it's a divine creative source inside of all of us. And it's related to the root chakra. And then we have turning in. So your partner, who in this card, she's meditating. She has taken on a very calm, contempl contemplative, still uh, posture. She looks very peaceful. She, her gown is like water. It's like her emotions, right? She's surrounded or sitting in her emotion. And she has all of these like goblins around her. So she's unmoved by, you know, I think these are like in the description of the card, these are like past lives, like the, the dharma of past life experiences. She's unmoved by these uh, 
specters. And she looks very peaceful, very calm. So it could be that your partner has a regular meditation practice or just embodies this energy quite frequently, sitting in their emotions, taking a very peaceful, quiet, still, contemplative stance and unmoved by illusion. This is illusion surrounding. You have beyond illusion over here. There could be something you're learning from your partner here in October. Uh, but they are tapping into their creative energy, their creative source energy, and this is the way that they do that. That's very interesting. Okay, let's pull a Crystal Healing Wisdom Oracle card and just try to get some advice for you moving through October, moving through this connection in October, or some additional information that will help to synthesize and clarify this reading. This is by Judy Hall, the Crystal Healing Wisdom Oracle deck. Here we go. Golden Healer. Ooh, that's pretty. Let's read about that. That is 27. Okay. Golden healers are imbued with powerful, transformative healing energies. They are a catalyst for profound spiritual activation. Understanding the quantum world helps you understand yourself. The everyday self is bounded by five senses, expanded by a sixth, metaphysics. But this can be transcended to move into a field that is non-local, everywhere and nowhere at once, where there is no time. You create the event being observed. Allow your soul, rather than your ego, to be your guide. Recognize your potential to be an amazing healer. So, speaking about healing again, like how your partner sees you as a healing force, or you have a healing um, effect on them, or are in the act of healing yourself. Recognize your potential to be an amazing healer. Your abilities needed honing, and those who heal are soul scoured to develop empathy. Much in your life needs transforming. Surrender willingly to the process. Someone clinging to the past holds you back. Encourage them to let go. You may be asked to transform your environment or take on a challenging task. Do so with grace and ease. Healing flows through you. It is a process, not something you do. So you're channeling this healing force. The frequency is exceptionally high. The chakra is soul stellar and stellar gateway. Uh, the timing is every moment. And the soul path is a channel for Christ consciousness. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, the thing that came through pretty strongly here is that there is some sort of healing process that is happening in your life here. It's a, it's a review of the past. It's a letting go of the past. It's getting to that point of integration, healing, and absolution for self-forgiveness and forgiveness of others so that you can step into this new beginning that your partner seems to be bringing in. And this healing that is taking place for you is also healing your partner, healing your connection in some way. They, they definitely see you as in this process and also bringing that into their life, into their world as well. In the outcome, we have this fiery, creative, passionate new beginning. And, you know, anything started, like I said, underneath the auspice of this card, the Ace of Wands holds good promise for the future. So there's something really exciting about what is going to come out of all of this. All right, Scorpio, I'm wishing you the best in October. If you like this reading, hit the like button so that it can circulate amongst others and leave a comment. I love to hear how these readings resonate. All right, take good care.